Hello, everybody. Welcome to Unity's official Twitch channel. We're live with another Let's Dev. So today we're doing the first Let's Dev animation stream. So it's the first in a series that we're going to do. I'm here with, well, I'm your host, Hassan, as usual. And I'm here with an amazing guest. I've been wanting to bring Nathan on for a while. Uh, please introduce yourself, Nathan. Hi, everybody. I'm Nathan, or Nate, and uh, I'm an animator here at Unity. Uh, I've spent a lot of my life animating and obsessed with animation, and I'm happy just to kind of share some of my tips and trips, uh, tips and tricks with you guys today. So uh, thank you for having me. I'm super excited. And, oh, it's, and... it's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you for joining, <laughs> and thank you for preparing so much for the stream. It's going to be so amazing. Uh, like we said, yeah, I said in the chat earlier, this is going to be very like conversational. We have a flow of things we're going to get through, but please feel free to chime in in the chat, ask questions. We'll be taking your questions. We'll, uh, we'll be building something, but we're willing to like make changes to it. Uh, you know, you can ask us to like make changes to the animations that we're doing and stuff like that. Just, you know, we really want to stick to that whole uh, real time philosophy where we can change things on the fly. Right. Um, what are we going to go over <clears throat> today? Uh, today we're looking at a really simple animation of uh, a loot chest opening up uh -huh. and uh, having something come out and be awesome. I mean, it's a very typical thing you might see in a video game, and I'm okay. um, showing how we can make it. And what are people going to be learning? <clears throat> we're going to be oh, sorry, thank you. We're no, going to no, be learning, no, please. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> we're going to be learning a bunch of stuff: animating on timeline, yeah. the animation editor. We're going to learn a little bit about cinema machine and cameras. Oh yeah, and even just some simple like like scene layout stuff to keep your scene tidy and make sense for other artists. And lastly, the recorder. So you know how to like record a, a movie or image sequence out of Unity and put that on YouTube or wherever. Nice. And what I love about this is it's all going to be very contextual. We're not talking about it just on a high level. We're going to put everything in practice. But before we show you what we're going to make, I'd love to do a little intro to just like uh, what you've, uh, your, your background, Nathan, things you've worked on in the past. And sure. uh, you have a big like uh, a lot of experience in the animation this industry right yeah i mean the majority i've been animating for about 15 years now and you can tell i'm getting a little bit gray and i'm getting a little old <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh i spent a lot of my time working in uh, movies like animation for live action movies mm -hmm. um some of like the most favorite ones were like star wars and wow. the bumblebee movie uh i really like the term last terminator movie got to work on was a lot of fun um I don't know, bunch of stuff. Batman, Superman. That's I don't know. Yeah, it's fun times. <laughs> it's amazing. So let's let's play some of the uh, footage of some things you've worked on. Maybe you can sure. Yeah. Some of it. Yeah. 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 So we'll what we're gonna see here is my own personal work. It's stuff that I do in my free time with my friends. Yeah. Uh, this big dinosaur is uh, one of the, I guess, bigger ones. It's voiced by my five-year-old son. And this is a fun one because I love the Pacific Rim giant monster movies and stuff. Um, and. Uh, I just thought let's let's take a turn on it. Let's make it in Unity. Let's let's do something funny. You know, let's have a giant robot and the monster is uh, you'll see in a second uh, uh, a cute <laughs> a cute dinosaur this guy. and <laughs> voiced by voiced by my five year old son. So yeah, that so was good. fun. <laughs> if you haven't seen this, where can they find these animations? Uh, you can go on YouTube to search up Little Mountain Animation. Uh, or on my website, Little Mountain Animation. Awesome. We, we dropped a link to that yeah. in the chat. Yeah, these animations are really amazing. Uh, this one I love, especially it has such a sense of scale mm. you achieved. And I think you did a lot of that with the, maybe with the camera work and, and things like yeah. that. So. Yeah, there's a lot of awesome tools. I love using Unity, like the virtual camera and all that stuff to help it feel realistic and grounded, like a real person's filming it, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's tons of fun stuff going out there. And this one is really fun, this little dino dancing thing. This is my favorite. Uh, we use Unity's new tool, Ziva. Unity acquired this company called Ziva, and they do a lot of like body dynamics. And my friend Guy here rigged it up with, you can get that like jiggly, like fleshy stuff on top. Like I have a close up here of, you know, some of the reactions and stuff in the skin, which is really hard to do in, in real time 3D. Um, so it's really cool to see that come through. It's so good. And and there's like the music that goes with this makes it so much better. So please check out <laughs> the YouTube and watch that video. It's uh, it's great. What is yeah, it like? The you. foot is it the Footloose song or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. <laughs> so good. Absolutely amazing. So um, I would love to jump to your screen now so we can show the sure. audience what we're actually going to be building today. All right. Sounds good. <clears throat> and the questions are already rolling in. We haven't even started. I love oh, that. Oh, cool. <laughs> 
I'll try and do. Uh, oh, sorry, my mic level gets blown out. Do I have to adjust anything? Are you guys okay? I just read that in the chat. So sorry. Yeah, no, I think it's fine. Okay, yeah, I cool. think we should be okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, this is a little scene that we're putting together today. Um, uh, it's just a bunch of assets that we pulled from the asset store, uh, and they're available on the asset store now, the assets that yes. we're using. Um, and I just wanted to demonstrate uh, what you can do with a couple of quick, simple assets. I'm going to hit play and show you folks. Just take a second to load yeah. here. Hey, Harry in the chat. We have Harry out of uh, one of our Unity insiders, and definitely in a lot of uh has joined us for a lot of our streams says oh damn awesome. i'm a big fan of your work nathan <laughs> oh hey thank you <laughs> um so yeah that's it just a simple uh it looks better in play mode but it's a simple little uh chest uh, opening up with some lights and some loot mm -hmm. coming out uh and the camera is going to do some some machine goodness in there Amazing. as well um so yeah, that's that's it do you want me to start from scratch now and recreate yeah, this we can we can do it definitely All right. so let's do let's that do so we'll we'll start from scratch build this whole thing it's gonna involve like we said earlier timeline cinema machine so yeah. just anim animating in the timeline right we're, all, yeah. we're doing everything in unity today yeah everything's in unity today okay, yeah awesome let's do it uh so i'm using hdrp uh i'm gonna make a new scene called basic outdoors cool, cool. uh just because you know the lighting and, and the volumes are set up to be outdoors which we are going to be yeah. so create that and i don't really want to save anything it's okay or whatever i'll save my old version and here we go so we have a very oh, basic fresh uh, new empty, scene fresh new scene <laughs> beautiful go. yeah uh the first i'm just going to close this we don't need that right now the first thing i'm going to do though is bring in our uh medieval city from astrofish games okay nice it's one of the so assets we're using yeah. again if you go to the front page of the asset store you'll see the stream and you'll see all the assets we're using listed right below perfect yeah and yeah. i'm just going to merge this scene in uh so i think it's medieval village demo i'm just going to drag that into my hierarchy view here nice and you'll see here, this is kind of a confusing setup because I have two scenes loaded in here. One is just our outdoor scene that we made, which comes with a, a camera, a sun, okay. and a volume. Nice. Uh, and this one is our medieval village demo scene, which has all of our um, pre-made asset goodies in here. Great. And you'll see, sorry, I should have cleaned this up before. No, I put all my stuff in this scene, so I'm going to delete it. My bow, okay. my, my magic effects. And, spoilers. Uh, yeah, spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> and my lights. Delete all those guys. Delete all my cameras. I think that's everything. Okay. All right. Cool. We have a, a great a question from the chat, which I think we're yeah. going to go over as we go from DJ Yu Miu. Uh, how does Unity animation differ from doing animation for, in softwares like Blender? It's a great question. And I still love animating in softwares like Blender and Excuse me. I like to use Maya, um, but it's the same kind of idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I would I would still, for majority of my character animation, still do it in Maya just mm -hmm. or Blender, just because it's those tools are very mature and they're very good at those specific tasks. Absolutely. Um, but for today, using a really simple um, setup that we're using, uh, Unity is totally capable to do that, and it works awesome. Yeah, and so. I think uh, you can like use a mix of things, right? So you could like yeah. have a character done in Maya, but then you can have basic stuff in your game, like doors opening, chests opening, and a few other, even like a little more complex things in Unity, yeah. right? Absolutely, yeah. like it's cool. just um, a really faster way of kind of iterating on those ideas. Nice. Yeah. Cool. All right. So the first thing we're going to do now, after we have our our awesome city, is we're going to try and find a spot to put our chest. I mean, I put it there before, but if we want to do it somewhere else, uh, we're free to do that. But I guess for the sake of uh, simplicity, let's just go with this. Uh, and I'm going to look for the hyper casual chests. There are some prefabs in here and you can look through here and see all the goodies. Um, yes, get a that preview. Are, yeah, I get a preview. You can orbit around, find the chest that you want. Mm, which um, chest speaks to you? Which chest speaks to you? I also want to ma mention that, so since we're using HDRP, Unity yeah. has different render pipelines. Mm -hmm. And these assets were built for the built-in render pipeline. So when okay. you download this asset, and if you're in HDRP, everything is going to be pink. Yeah, and you're going to freak out, and you're going to send me hate mail. And uh, <laughs> it's really easy. You just select, you go into the materials, you just select okay. all the materials. 
and you go window rendering HDRP wizard. And the bottom of that says convert selected milk built in materials to HDRP. It takes two seconds and then everything should work. And then just no fun. more hate mail. No more hate mail. So then <laughs> yeah, I just prevented hate mail. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where were we? Yeah. Okay. We're choosing a chest. Um, so I, I kind of liked uh, this guy. Um, boom. Look Ooh. at that. Beautiful. Just the right size. Just the right size. Uh, <laughs> so the shortcut to scale things down is R. And I'll uh, click in the middle so I get the same kind of universal scaling mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And until it feels, you know, like it belongs in this environment. Amazing. All right, cool. So if in practice, if you were like building this and let's say you're like, you know, you're building this for a game, would you scale something down? Would you mess with the scale like that? Or would you mess with the scale of the original model or the prefab? Yeah, it totally depends on what you want to do. You can just change the scale in the prefab itself, and then it applies that to all versions of that uh, asset. Yeah. Uh, and so you just import it and it just kind of magically is at the right scale. So mm -hmm. whatever when way you, works for you. But when you import things from Blender, there's actually the model file. So you can, mm -hmm. which is actually like a layer beneath, like it's like a layer beneath the actual prefab. You can also right. change that scale too. So in your, in your practice, do you usually keep that model scale at one and then change the scale in Unity? Uh, that's a great, great point. I would change the import on the import model. So I bring the it in. Model. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's way too big. Let's just make it feel right in the import settings, and then yeah. we'll update in our scene. And that way, and you can right scale at one. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you don't really want you might want to avoid having weird scale numbers right. in, in here. Uh, so that's a good way to do that. Nice. Cool. Um, and you'll notice that we have this untitled scene here. I'm just going to move all of our stuff into the medieval village scene. Um, and the sun is kind of like not giving us any light. Like we're over here, we're kind of in the shadow. So I'm just going to put this onto global and just try and like hit some sunlight on our chest. I can still see our little chest down there. So let's see here. Yeah. How's that look? Cool. Uh, and I also sometimes like to tear the game window off so that I can see two at once, you know, so that I can, I know what the lighting looks like, uh, in my game camera. And right. have the CV at the same time. So this is what the camera is actually going to be seeing, right? This exactly. Is okay, yeah. Cool. But for today, just because streaming is tough to see, uh, I'll leave it kind of one nice. view at a time. Makes sense. Keep yeah. it as big as possible for y'all. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Okay. Cool. So I think what we're going to do before we start animating this guy is uh, we need to kind of set up some. Let's see here. Local pivot. Does this thing open up? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, it's nice. already <laughs> at the right pivot point and everything. So, so I have casual chess. I love it. Yeah, we don't have to do much in great terms asset. of yeah. <laughs> great asset. Made for games. <laughs> Made for games. So what we're going to do is we are going to make a timeline. So I'm going to click on this little plus and go create empty. And it's going to go. Sorry, oh, go sorry. No, no. Go ahead. I'm just going to call it timeline chest. Yeah. And I'm also going to move it into the medieval village demo. Uh, I can probably almost get rid of this scene for now, but it's just there for for now. Oh, we have um, a great question from the chat. Sure. Uh, so yeah, when I said like great game asset, I really meant it because a lot of assets you, you can get a lot of assets that are made for movies that don't take those things in my, like into consideration. You know, you can get like a wheelbarrow asset where the wheels aren't detached, and so you can't actually get them to like add a like rolling animation to them, for example. Right. But but a lot of the assets on the asset store obviously are made with games in mind, interactivity in mind. Uh, we have a question from Harry on that point. Mm -hmm. Um. What would you do if the pivot wasn't that conveniently placed and it was, say, in the middle? Oh, great question, Harry. I love that stuff. So let's unpack this prefab. So you can just right click on it, prefab, unpack. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do then is do some very basic rigging. Um, if you're used to Blender or Maya, you know, rigging is uh, where you put joints and stuff into character mesh. Mm -hmm. And then you can uh, adjust the pivots and stuff. But we're not even going to do that. We're going to very simple and just use hierarchy changes. So okay. what I'm going to do is make a game object and kind of just roughly position it uh, where the pivot should be. Let's say like on this hinge. Oh, that looks roughly like I, you could really make sure it's in the right spot. But for the point of um, this discussion today, I'm just going to put it there. And then I'm going to put the chest cover under that. And now 
when I wrote, so it's not right. <laughs> it's not wrote. It's not in the right spot. So things are kind of off. But you can see now that uh, this game object has that pivot, and then okay. I'm animating that game object instead of the object with the broken pivot. If that makes sense. Makes total sense. Okay, so you're creating right. a an empty object which simply acts as the pivot point and then you're going to apply the thing yep. will just act like a mesh essentially under that game object exactly yeah okay. and and philip uh said ah the good old hierarchy rigging workaround and yep <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm just gonna undo all that and go back to my prefab oh i guess it's uh already i wonder no did I... there we go okay we're good uh, all right, so the first thing we got to do is make a timeline. And if you're used to Blender or Maya or anything, or mm -hmm. even like an editing software, there is like one timeline for everything, right? There's okay. it's like Lord of the Rings, just one timeline that rules them all. <laughs> and in video games, you can put timelines on anything, right? Like okay, because uh, you might want every chest in the game to have its own timeline. So that's the biggest difference coming from something like Maya is is learning that timelines are flexible and can be applied to numerous objects. So so that's uh, super interesting because like that immediately coming from those other softwares sounds immediately confusing because yeah. timeline in Premiere Pro let's say mm -hmm. just you know beginning to end it's the whole thing right and then you yeah. can have nested timelines within that main timeline but in a game there isn't that main high level timeline that runs the entire thing right mm -hmm. so when do those timelines start? When do they end? Like, uh, if there are different timelines, when when are they happening? When do they oh, start? Well, yeah. that can be kind of controlled by the users. You can kind of mm -hmm. have your timeline. Like, in any game, there's probably hundreds of timelines cycling at any given moment. So right. it's um, difficult for me to answer when it so begins and ends. So you activate them. Yeah, as a creator, you can activate yep. them and, and have them looping or whatever. Um, so, cool. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to make a new one. And for this chest, and I'm going to go to uh, the package manager. And there's a few packages that we're going to, they're already installed, but there's a few ones that you're going to need for this project. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is Cinemachine. Nice. So add that, it's already in here. The second one is Timeline, which is right here. And the third one is Recorder, which is right here. And we'll Perfect. get to those other ones later, but right now we're just focusing on Timeline. Nice. So we have them all in. So you just go to Package Manager, Unity Registry, and find them. And then you can even search for those in the search bar. You bet. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, and then once it's installed, you want to go Window, Sequencing, Timeline. And you can pop this uh, timeline wherever it makes sense for you. I like to kind of put it down here. Uh, and it says here, to start creating a timeline, select a game object. So as I mentioned, we can put timelines on anything. Yeah. Uh, and we made this empty game object here. Uh, and we want to create a timeline on it. So let's just click create. Amazing. And it's going to ask us, because we're now we're saving this timeline as an actual asset in our project. So I'd like okay. to create it nice and tidy by putting in assets, a timelines folder. I just made this for the previous version of this demo. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to call it timeline chest. Timeline? OK, why not? <laughs> uh, <laughs> like we said, we're going to go over lots of little tips and tricks. And project organization and folder organization is one of those things. We're gonna yeah, you know, yeah. like there's a numerous times where I uh, was an animator working on, on film projects. Uh -huh. And I saw so, uh, someone else hands over a scene. I, I'm helping them out or, or whatever. And I love the scene. And I have no idea what's going on. Because their scene hierarchy management is just all over the place. Right. And if you're a game dev, I'm sure the same thing happens where you got to make sure your scene is tidy and that so other users in your project can can find stuff. Right. Um, OK, and so now you'll notice that we have this timeline with our timeline chest thing here. But if I click on something else, oh, it's gone. Uh, so what it's doing is it's looking for this a timeline on that object. So I want to mm -hmm. lock this timeline, because I'm just going to work on this one for now. All right. Uh, and so what we want to do is add a chest. Let's go into here and go add animation track. Nice. So now we've got an animation track for this chest. Um, and I'm going to start animating away. All right. So first thing I want to do is I use W and E. Those are our hotkeys for translation and rotation. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to right click on, on those position, oops, those position values, position mm -hmm. rotation, and just key those guys um just for the first frame and then once you hit this little red button that's kind of like 
it's an auto key. If you're used to Maya Blender, um, that means that any change I make, it will automatically save a key. So now you'll see it kind of magically doing what I told it to do. And, and did you create an animation yet? Or when you're done with this, it'll ask you to create an animation file for uh, um, yeah, we can the get animator. Yeah, yeah, you can right click on this and go convert to clip and then export that so you can repopulate it uh, in your scene. I see. Um, but right now there's no actual animation clip. It's just part of this timeline. Okay, so this animation exists within the timeline and is there even an animator file right now or no? It's not I don't even think creating so. an animator file. Oh, interesting. Okay. I mean, maybe. I'm not I don't I don't know if I have the answer to that. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> well, if you didn't make one then I think I think uh, we're good. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, and the, one other tip about timeline is if you click on this little gear box here, mm -hmm. you can uh, choose your frame rate. Um, so if I'm animating a short film, for example, I want to make sure that I'm on like a film uh, frame rate. Um, or you, oh yeah, someone adds in the chat, timeline requires an animator component, but no animator controller asset. Thank you. Perfect. Look at that. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, a good game. distinction to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, game frames per second. Um, yeah. And that means that we have to do a little bit of math here. So let's say that this chest, let's have it sit for a second. Uh, I'm going to save another key on here after 60 frames. Uh, add key. And then we're going to just have it, you know, pop open. So I'm going to try and minimize this guy. And let's just see how this goes. Boom. I'm just going to, like, a lot of times when I'm animating, like, I kind of know what I want it to do, but not always you know i'm i'm finding it it's kind of like sculpting a little bit so you're going back and forth you're experimenting you see if you like it you go back yeah okay cool. exactly yeah and i don't like this immediately uh so i'm going to delete those keys and so you can click on this little curve expander here oh nice and you can just delete this can you zoom in on that just to show the yeah, chat, sure. uh, what that looks like and undo. yeah so i'll oh sorry i'll undo yeah and so each one of these if you're used to animation uh, this is what gets people a little bit nervous about animation is mm -hmm. like each value has its each axis has its own value on a curve. Okay. Uh, and it has a numerical value assigned to its position. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't worry about that too much at this stage. If you're just starting out, just just focus on trying to make uh, nice poses and nice animation and timing. But okay. uh, I think what we want to do is I'm, I'm thinking I want the chest to rumble before it pops up, pops like up a little that. bit. Some anticipation. Anticipation. I love it. Yeah, so let's just do a little rumble. And then also, you can, what is a shortcut? If you uh, use the little arrow keys um, while you're over the timeline, it'll frame by frame through it. Oh, wonderful. Um, so if you're an animator, that's your that's your best friend. All right, and then we have to, we have to be moused over the timeline. That's the only thing uh, that catches me. And then, okay, so let's say we're happy with that. I'm going to add a position key. And then let's just see how it looks. All right, all right, it's coming. Nice. And sometimes animation, watching people animate, is like the most boring thing in the world. So uh, I find it very uh, therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good to hear. <laughs> Leonard okay. uh, says uh, the animator component is on your game object. The animator controller asset is uh, an asset that is put as a reference on the animator component. So you can imagine as the animator component is the CD player, while the controller is the actual CD you put in. Beautiful analogy. I Thank love you. that. Thank you so much for <laughs> just uh, adding adding some uh, knowledge to me today. Yeah. This is this is great. Yeah, this is what community is all about. Like Absolutely. I'm not the best at everything, but you know that's <laughs> why we can leverage each other. The community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and okay, I like so you're making it rotate back and forth. So yeah, yeah, really exaggerated. Yeah jumping off the ground. Exactly, exactly. Whatever's so in there I, is trying to escape. <laughs> and I like to uh, double click on this um, timeline and okay. you'll notice, hey, where, oh, there you go. It's really small. I was like, where's my animation window? But it was tiny. Um, you'll see here, these are my keyframes. And this is the dope sheet. Nice. So this is like, why can't I move this window? I dope sheet, what is that? Um, I will tell. There we go. So back in the day when they're animating Toy Story, that's this is the only way they can manipulate animation timing was with a Dope Sheet, and it's essentially just mm -hmm. saying like if you use After Effects or Adobe Premiere or anything like that, they have a similar kind of looking uh, visual keyframe 
adjustment. So it's just saying that you have a key at this frame at, on these objects. So you can then select them and retime them very easily, mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, so makes sense. Uh, what I see here is my chest bursting to life. Nice. Boom. But what it's it's not kind of coming back to the same pose at the end. So I'm going to take this key okay. I say at the beginning. Maybe just add a new one. Can I do that in here? Yeah. Add a key and then just, just drag it over to this part here. Okay. So it's going to kind of pop back to where it was so that it's not like in a different spot. It doesn't feel weird. And that's great if you're looping as well, right? Because then you get to bring it back around. Like exactly. You got to have that seamless beginning and end, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, cool. So now you'll notice that this doesn't look great. Um, but let's go into the curve editor and just start uh, seeing what we can tidy up. I think what so, I, so what is it about it that you're not liking right now? Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. I don't like how it, the landing, yeah, it kind of like slides back. Mm, and what I, I want to feel is that weight like settle, you know, and right now it kind of like goes and slides back, which is a bit weird. Makes sense, yeah, yeah, and you'll. Sometimes when you're starting to animate, you'll know that something doesn't feel right, but you don't know why. Uh, and part of getting experience is just, you know, understanding, learning what's giving you that feeling and listening to that intuition that all artists have, you know, like something's not right with the lighting. I don't know what it is. I'm going to keep noodling till I feel better about it. Right. Uh, okay. And... The Y here, let's see this. I'm going to give it a bit more hang time. So by adjusting this up uh, and these curves, just playing with this stuff, just to like make it feel like it's in the air a little uh -huh. bit longer. And OK, OK, it's coming. It's coming together. It's coming along. So which curve are you are you animating? How did you know to animate this curve? Like, Yeah, that's a good question. So if you look at like the local, for example, Mm -hmm. This will tell you what curve you're animating. So Y is typically green. Right. So, so right now green. I'm animating the up and down. So that's it's going to hang in the air, like how much vertical it's getting. Got it. Uh, and Z is typically forward. Z or Z. I'm Canadian, so I say Z all the time. I'm also Canadian, uh, so I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and X is... The Z uh, stream. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> X is side to side. Uh, -huh. uh all right and i'm just gonna get rid of this forward because that's probably part of what's causing uh yeah okay. uh, and it boom. looks like that slide you're not liking is coming from the rotation so we might need to change the rotation on the green am i right let's see I, the y oh let's see oh i got it but i mean it is green in the uh Oh, I see. The, I see. Gotcha. But the F curve editor is uh, yes. That's what different. I meant. The one. Yeah. yeah. No. It's okay. That's okay. You're you're a better animator than me, man. You're, no. You know no, what you're not talking true. about. You know what you're talking about. <laughs> Definitely not. All right. So oh, this nice. is cool. Cool. That's coming. Um, what if we want to make that drop faster? Let's like, do it. Let's how do, do we do it. that? It's all in the Y. It's all, all in the Y. y. Boom. So you can see here. This is animation like. Uh, 101 but you when objects are in motion they tend to this is a glass case for my glasses so i'll use mm -hmm. it as a demonstration <laughs> uh, glasses, yeah. <laughs> uh, when objects are in motion they tend to stay in motion until you give them a reason to stop so right. like right now this box is kind of like coming down fast and then it like slows it's almost like it, it knows it's about to hit the it ground it knows it's about to hit which the it ground. shouldn't it shouldn't know that no it should be anonymous object. accelerating until it hits the ground yeah, exactly and so you can see here like this curve is telling it like once you get to the end you got to slow down yeah. uh and we don't want that we don't want that box to know that no oh. so you can grab this handle and make it straight and that's telling me that like the the rate of de like acceleration into the ground is going to be um constant like that might have made sense for something like a bird or something like that that knows it's like you know slowing yeah. down before it lands but not for a physical object that's right not yeah. for like a rock or a yeah uh, whatever the, there like we go animal. how does that feel does that feel a little yeah. better yeah definitely boom all right uh a big part of being an animator is knowing the energy in, a, in an object and okay. knowing uh where the energy is coming from and how it's like leaving the object hmm. and sorry i just heard someone behind me i think it, i got a five-year-old running around back no oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh and all right so let's say we're happy with that. Yeah. The next thing we gotta do 
is add a track for the top because the top has to open. Otherwise, you can't get your loot. No, right? exactly. We need that loot. We need that loot. And this is that. So we're going to have to add an animation track. I see. So it's an animation track for the child of the thing we were animating before, and we just drag it into the timeline again, right? That's right. Yeah. Cool. Boom. And you know what could be fun? <clears throat> yeah. Is maybe, maybe, just maybe, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of. Oh, uh, I know what you're doing. You know what I'm doing? I know what you're doing. You're going to make the lid open up as it's falling down? Just a little bit. Nice. Just a little I love bit. that. And then when it hits the ground, it'll boom. slam shut. Okay, cool. It's, just, it's then, not a lot. It's subtle. Oh, right? it's let's great. Just, let's it's add, it, it adds so much. Uh, I can't even see it. So let's let's make it bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can already great. start to imagine like the sound of this now, right? Like oh, as it's, yeah, yeah. And if you're a sound designer, it's like awesome to work with yes. animators and stuff, and and like they really like the work kind of just feeds each other, right? Which is really fun. So Definitely. yeah. All right. So then we have a little bit of an overlap in that chest. Maybe it can do a little bounce, like it like hits and then does like a. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm asking too much of you. You're hired. <laughs> you are hired. Let's do it. Let's do it. I lost I'm like, my uh, armchair animating. <laughs> Have you back, seen that animated GIF? <laughs> what is this it? animated GIF? It's like a, a artist at a computer and someone sitting behind them being like, "Oh, look, look yeah, yeah, here. that's me right now." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I wouldn't have I'm it any other way. Having too much fun. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, it's subtle, but it's yeah, there. We can make cool. it bigger. Yeah. And then I'll give it just another beat and have it pop open. Okay. And how how do you want this to be like a sudden pop or something like that? I don't That's know. Cool. What does the chat think? Do you guys want it yeah, to pop up really fast? Let us know, chat. Let us know how you want this chest to open. Do you want the lid to just pop off, break off? <laughs> <laughs> and you'll notice that it like it like loops real fast. So I'm just going to add another key at the very end just so that it knows. Uh, the chat seems to say it should open fast. And Nathan Red Dragon says sudden pop. Give them a little so scare. All right. <laughs> and then uh, Tesla RX says I don't open chests anymore. I'm too afraid of mimics. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's fair. I love it. All right. So let's make it a bit faster. So I can okay. just use a dope sheet here uh, yeah. to make this a little bit faster. Okay. So, so you're just and dragging it along the time. Absolutely. Same oh, animation, I, shorter time. That's exactly it. Just adjusting timing. Amazing. Look at that. It's snappy. It's Boom. popping open. Love it. Great. All right. Um, so now you notice that we have two objects mm -hmm. and our timeline can easily get out of control because we're going to add oh yeah someone in the chat says there's no loot inside there we're going to get there there will be there will be loot. <laughs> uh, so our timelines can get messy quickly and uh what's awesome is we've add this uh track group option in our timeline and i'm mm -hmm. just going to call this give it a name i'm going to call it chest open and then i can drag these fellas into oops uh into there and then minimize so now i know it's like a nested little option keeps mm. things tidy i know that this section is going to have the chest opening animation in it that's great i had yeah. no idea you could do that that's awesome well because like timelines can get like huge right so yeah. it's nice to keep them tidy when you're, where you can definitely uh and let's add another track group we're going to call it loop just for the can chat so can you apply anything to these groups or are they simply there for organization? Uh, apply, what do you mean? Sorry. Like, a, I don't know, some kind of transform animation to the whole group or I don't know, like uh, activate the group, for example. That's a uh, good, 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 great question. I You can't do that yeah. with this group, but you can make groups, which I will do uh, in the scene. So you can okay. create a new empty object and I'm gonna call it like, uh, we can call it a like chest, for example. And then I also like to, when I'm making a new group for hierarchy reasons, mm -hmm. I like to make sure that you zero it out so you don't have any transforms on it. Uh, and then you can put that chest in this thing and then you can take this whole group. And let's say you have like 50 oh. of these chests in there. Yeah. Then you can add that 
chest as in like an activation track for example like that okay. whole group so now It'll i'll just quickly everything. do it just to illustrate the point so let's say we have three chests right and now they're all in this thing so they're all gone the activation track is just telling us that it's going to be alive during that time oh nice does that make sense does that kind of answer your yeah question? And, and so it, why, why is it only animating one of them uh so i only have animation curves applied to this instance I uh I, you could make a clip and then apply it to the other prefabs but they're just right now duplicates with no animation makes sense cool thank you yeah sweet yeah thank you good good question all right delete that we had the loot and we're gonna go back to our hyper casual games and find some awesome loot so we got arrows we got bombs. Nice, nice. Uh, I used the bow in the last demo, but let's see if there's something else. Like, is there Should a we let chat like? Uh, yeah, chat. Any suggestions? What do, you, what do you want to come out of this? A Thor's hammer. A Thor's hammer. <laughs> what kind of loot are we getting? A sword. And are we uh, getting one thing? Can we get like multiple things? <laughs> I mean, I'm down we can for do it. One to keep it. We can do one for simple. now. We can but... do one. We can do one. Oh, okay. next next year wants a hat or a taco. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get some different rock or different <laughs> asset packs for that. There was a crown. There was, was a there? crown. Yeah. Okay. See, crown. crown. You want, you guys want a crown? Let's do it. Let's do a crown. Machine do gun. It. I don't think there's a medieval machine guns, but I could be wrong. <laughs> you never know. You never know. All right. So let's put this crown up here. And this is a really big crown. Uh, well, that's okay. Let's put it a little bit higher. So it's like magical and all right so then i'm just going to drag this crown uh, sorry back into my other scene and then drag it into the loot uh mm -hmm. group and go add animation track okay nice. and and an activation track but i'll do the activation track after so i think this is probably a good time for it to show up so i'm just going to key it where i want it to wind up and then start it down inside here so it's kind of like hiding in, inside the loot chest right. and i'm going to scale it down a little bit too so it comes out and it's like oh you know what i forgot to scale it on this frame so let's make that one mm -hmm. oh so it's going to scale up it's going to start small and yep yeah nice. every time on um, like when i worked on like kids animations and stuff uh yeah for TV, there would always be like someone pulling something out of their pocket, like a, a wand or something. Okay. And we'd always have to like scale it down so it's really small, so it's, it's hidden and then it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. It's just <laughs> so the same, the same <laughs> thing applies. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Great. <laughs> That's awesome. And then maybe we'll add like a little rotation to it as well. So I'll just yes. like go into the curve editor. This is the easiest way to do it. And just add like whatever, 360 or something on it. There we go and make it linear let's just see how that looks yeah oh it's way too fast so maybe we'll go back into here and add in the rotation mm -hmm. i'll just take this one and just move it out a little bit just to, just to like let it settle a little bit and then even like the settling sometimes for translations i like to like add a key and then just cushion it slightly so let's see if that oops that didn't work so the position, why? John, so John yeah, 5S sorry. says 580 rotation, please. 580. All right, you got it. <laughs> Let's just see if this works first. There we go. It still feels really fast, but um, let's see what I can do. Before I adjust the rotation, just yeah. get these guys out. All right. Nice. Maybe too slow, but whatever. Okay, cool. Uh, rotation 580. Let's do it. Let's. Oh, look at that curve. That curve is not very good. Just going to tidy that up. Make this guy linear. You can right click on it and go linear. And go to 580. I think you can change the value. In... So why 580? Why do you think they chose 580 as a rotation? It's just a random. I have Number no idea. No idea. Okay. No idea. I was wondering if there was some kind of like animation <laughs> significance to this, you know? If there is, let me know. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm too old for that reference if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's over 360. Okay, cool. That's fine. Um, 
All right, cool. So now we're, we're feeling pretty good about our little our little loot. It looks great. Thing. Uh, maybe we could add some some special effects and little Ooh, pizzazz. Amazing. Oh wait, sorry. I was going to demonstrate one more thing. I was going to add an activation track. Right. So, so what? Can... The, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Uh, so in case like. Um, Let's say a, a user knocks the chest over. You don't want to see the loot like hiding somewhere underneath it. I see. You can have the activation attract uh, add it to this, so it's only going to show up, you know, when you want it to show up. Interesting. If okay. What are other uses for the activation track? Uh, it could be for like lights, like you know, turning on in certain cutscenes or mm -hmm. characters in cutscenes. I do a lot of cutscene stuff, so that's that's where I would use it for. Okay. Um, it's just like when you want a simple off-on toggle for any asset. Um, okay, so you could have an animation that's constantly like uh, on a sine wave, let's say, that stays on something that you can have it activate, then deactivate, then reactivate throughout the timeline right totally yeah okay. whenever you want the the audience to see it cool uh cool. but we can also use it for visual effects which we're going to do right now uh, i'll show yes. you how we do that so i use this magic circle effects uh which is in the asset store as well and there's a bunch of these fun little effects you can't really preview them so until you apply it um yes. i think you play yeah so we can pick one that we want to kind of show up when our chest opens. Mm -hmm. um, I think I used like an orange or yellow one before, so I'll try and keep it to that. There you go. That looks cool. Uh, it's also scaled up a little bit big, so I'm just going to drop it down to like 0.5. Oops. And let's see if that looks good. All right. That looks cool. Nice. Uh, and you, you'll notice right. that it's kind of like floating. So it's tricky because the ground is a little bit unlevel here. Right. Uh, so it's kind of clipping through the ground. So I'm just going to try and find something that looks half decent. Hopefully maybe we in... can rotate it a bit. Yeah, maybe just rotate yeah. it a little bit. Uh, where did it go? This guy. There we go. So that looks all right. Beautiful. Love it. And let's add a new timeline group. I'm going to call it uh vfx and add an activation track yeah for this guy so as soon as the chest opens we're going to have this effect go off and you'll notice that you don't really see it um in preview mode you have to be in game mode to check that out um but let's do that quickly i guess do we have a good camera it's a decent camera see what this looks like let's see what it looks like chad is very excited about the magic circle and again that's an asset we use from the asset so we dropped a link in the chat whoa Ooh, wow beautiful amazing okay so we're, magic <laughs> we're already very close to the to the final result that's right okay uh and i think the last thing we want to talk about is like cinema machine and cameras and yeah. like how do you actually film this thing um, Wait, were we gonna add some volumetric light to this Oh yeah, let's do yeah, that. Yeah, that's good. that always makes things look super it sure does. dramatic. Yeah. Okay, so let's get a uh, light spotlight, and I'm gonna go to bubble and put it behind. I think so, backlight always looks cool, so never go wrong. Exactly. It's always lights, camera action. You know, we gotta get the lights in there. <laughs> uh, and. So I'm not a lighter, so apologize. I apologize that I don't really know much about lumen values and stuff. But I'm just going to crank this until it starts to show up. Yep. And I'm sure there's lighters in the audience that are cringing, but forget. <laughs> no, no, I think it makes sense. The lumen value uh, has to be super high for you to see it because lighting is, uh, I guess it's like relative, right? So if the if the camera is the exposure is set up for a daytime scene. You're going to mm -hmm. have to set the lighting even higher so that you can actually see it with right. that camera exposure, right? That's yeah. You're, you're a way better lighter than I will ever be. So thank you so much. For that. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Uh, so the first thing I like to do is make sure you enable volumetrics. That just adds mm -hmm. a lot of fun stuff to it. Cool. And then just, you can crank this to be whatever works best for you. 
Um, and man, to enable shadows. Shadows. Uh, yes. yes. You gotta have those shadows. Um, oh, and make like maybe a wider circle so that it's like going oh, around yeah. the chest. Outer angle. Whoa. There so we you go. Got, you know what that angel choir kind of going <laughs> yes, off. Yes. Uh, and sometimes when you make it uh, a wider kind of outer angle, you have to make it brighter because it's kind of um, mm -hmm. diffusing a bit. So let's see what we have to do here. All right, I think it's the same, but let's Maybe. try like 7E, whatever. Okay, uh, cool. So now it's looking pretty, pretty epic. Um, oh. You can play with all the shadow and lighting settings in your HDRP asset, but that's yeah. another topic for another day. Definitely. Uh, to get nicer shadows and lighting quality. Let us know if that's something you want us to cover on the stream. It's just a yeah. whole lighting stream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And someone even mentioned, yeah, I like to use uh, lens flare or dirt lens. And that is, I love that stuff too. So yeah, cool. that's something we can definitely look into. Um, and then I'm going to have to animate this light because you don't want it on like while the chest is just chilling. You want it to be on when the chest opens. True. So I'm going to add a new group. I'm going to call it Lighting. Lights. And I'm going to add an animation track to this one mm -hmm. and just drag it. Add animation track. I, mean, I always get activation animation. I always click on the wrong one. So if you do that as well. <laughs> Then you're part, the <laughs> you're part of the club. You're part of the club. Okay, so let's say we want it to be here. So I'm going to animate it and select my light. And oops, that's on the light. Where is my light? Spotlight. Oh, look at this. I was animating the wrong object. Let me just forgive me. Okay, All right. Okay, cool. And I'm going to turn that button on and right click on the intensity. Yeah. And then use my arrow keys to go back a few frames uh, and just turn it to zero. And nice. now, beautiful. Look right. at that. So we didn't want it to just pop in with an activation track. We wanted to kind of like to fade dim in. on. Yeah, to yeah. fade in. Yeah. yeah. You could use an activation track, but like you said, it will just be like off on. There's no jarring. Nice, yeah, yeah. Very jarring. Yeah. Yeah. That would work for like a house, like like light switch, maybe, right? Uh, I probably would still animate it. Still animate maybe, it, yeah. yeah. I don't no, know. Probably right. on your, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, it probably just be a lot faster, like maybe a frame or two, or, or you know, True. just a little bit of little fade bit in. of yeah. fade in. Yeah, that's how light works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. All right, Amazing. so cameras next, I assume. Yes, um, that's perfect. All right. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Excited. So I'm going to make a Cinemachine track. All so right, we downloaded so Cinemachine. To Cinemachine. I, I don't know. It depends how you like to organize your scene, but I like to drag this camera to the top uh, just because we're going to have a lot of cuts and stuff, and mm -hmm. sometimes the camera cut will inform you on what you need to animate and change. So if you can see the cut from the top, it's a much easier way of kind of understanding where in your sequence you are. Yeah. Uh, and so it says here, none. There's nothing dragged. There's no machine brain. So I'm going to drag this main camera, which is already in our scene and positioned here, mm -hmm. to this track here. And you'll notice that nothing is happening. So what you want to do is right click and go add the machine shot. Mm -hmm. And again, nothing is happening. So what it's saying is giving us this uh, warning here that there is. Uh, Nothing. There is no cinema machine shot. So we have to make an actual camera. So if you have some in your scene, you can browse with this guy. But we're just going to create a new one. Okay. And when you click this Create button, it's going to create this virtual camera wherever your scene camera is. So if we're like way up here and I click Create, it'll create the camera from this view. Um, so what's a fun tip to kind of like, uh, you know, work, increase your, your speed is just trying to find a camera angle that you like in your scene view and then click create and then now our game view will be at that exact same camera angle. okay uh great and there's a few ways that you can animate your camera um i'll walk right. you through some of them uh so what are they at a high level what are the three different ways if, before we jump into each one in detail yeah thank you there is the uh you can animate a virtual camera with keyframes. And okay. since I'm an animator, I always like to do that. Yeah. You can use Cinema Machine to like blend between different cameras. So there's no actual keyframes. You're just telling, I want 
one camera here, one camera here, and you just transition between them. Uh, and there's a few other ones with Cinema Machine, but the one that we'll look at today is uh, having a dolly. So you can actually like place like markers in your scene and have your camera translate across uh, that kind of um, dolly as it kind of, you know, like you would on a real movie set. They have those little dollies and a guy pushes it. Absolutely. So, yeah, same idea. Cool. All right. So the first one is animation. So let's drag this virtual camera into here and go animation track. Uh, and I'm, for now, I'm going to have to tear this guy off. And um, I'll just try and maximize it so you guys can see what I'm doing. So what we're going to do is hit that little record button, hit W for our translate. I like to be in local space for this type of thing. And I'm going to save a key on both these asset or attributes. And this guy starts moving. So... Yeah, so what are you thinking now? How are we going to... I'm thinking we're just going to do a slow push in slow until... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And cool. then maybe it's like starts to back off a little bit. Oh, just as it goes up, like anticipating yeah. the drop? Okay. It's, it's like, what's happening? <laughs> and then maybe we'll just keep it here until it cracks open. Yes. We'll see how that looks. And then... As it's opening, we'll pull back a little bit and, and orbit up a little bit so that you can see what the camera is looking at. Whoa. Oh, amazing. so good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one way you can do it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's do it another way. Let's try. Yeah. I, I like this next way for like quickly blocking out ideas for cameras, mm -hmm. you know, like sometimes like like animation is exploration you don't really know what you want uh the final outcome to be so you just start blocking Rough. cameras out and mm -hmm. roughing it in and you can find a lot of ideas really quickly whereas this is was more of a precise kind of method you're, you're exactly gonna, now you yeah. do something a bit more rough. okay let's see yeah and so someone mentioned uh about fov in the chat and oh yes we will get there uh, also we so can change the fov as we go on the, along the track as well uh yeah you bet cool. so let's just go let's start wide and I'm going to call um, this virtual camera wide. And I'm just going to duplicate it three times, or two times, sorry. And I call this one, oops, your name. Oh, interesting question from Nathan yeah. Red Dragons. It says, wouldn't increasing the FOV make the image slightly blurrier? Blurrier? Um, I don't think it'll make it blurrier. You can add certain different blurs to different types of lenses if you mm -hmm. want, but that's a custom kind of thing you can do. It'll just it could be change wrong. the perspective, right? Yeah, uh, it should just... Unless it, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. But like a real camera, if you adjust the lens, it does change the, like the, the depth of field and all that kind of stuff. Right. But yes. those are things we have to add manually to these cameras uh, on top of our... Gotcha, animation. gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and then... Um, oh, sorry. This one's supposed to good be question. a medium. Sorry, yeah. I was saying good question to the... Yeah, good question. To Nathan. To Nathan. Great question, Nathan. I love the name. Love the question. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. We got a medium. And I'm going to right click on here and go add a uh, submission shot. And I'm just going to use this little virtual camera thing to populate our uh, real close. And then this next one adds the machine shot. I'm going to go wide. So a submission okay. shot is essentially another camera yeah exactly okay, cool yeah and so now you'll see we have medium hey we didn't actually move these cameras so you have and, to and, do that <laughs> oh yeah and just for everyone like a cinema machine camera is just essentially a transform with some information that the main cinema machine camera brain is taking from right there's only there's really only one camera in the scene yeah and those are just like packets of information telling the camera what to do. That's what uh, virtual cameras are, right? Exactly, That's yeah. So we, we render just one camera out, but we're able to kind of feed that camera different positions and different focal lengths and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yes. And you can do a lot of interesting stuff with scripting and, and all that kind of stuff that's way beyond me, but mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have our medium, we have our close-up, and are wide. So I think because I duplicated it in the wide angle, I'm just going to take the medium. 
So when you show when you first showed me what you're about to do, this blew my mind. I did not know you could do this oh, really? at all. Yeah, I thought it was so cool. But like right now you're showing us the shots separately, but you can just drag them into each other as you just did. Yeah, you can drag them into each other just like you're in um Premiere or some other type of editing software. So let's see here. And then they I blend. And they blend between the positions. So Ta-da. So and you can adjust the length of the blend in here. Can you play with the curve of that blend by any chance? Great or? question. I'm not. I think there is this transition stuff. I don't know much about it though. Hmm. I'll have to. I'll have to find out. And if we do another one, I'll. I'll uh, update the. Okay. Because right now it does feel it's very linear that blend. So I would love it if there's a softer, like curve transition right. between them. But right. I'm sure it's possible. I just don't know how. Uh, okay. So one thing I also wanted to add is like. Oh, we got a sorry. We got an answer yeah. from Leonard. In the top right, you can, you can by modifying the blend curves in and out. Okay, let's try that. These guys here, manual. Yeah, sorry for interrupting you though. No, that's fine. Yeah. I love it. Um, um, I don't know Perfect. what to do. Yeah. I guess I can adjust this. All right, there we go. Let's there try you. adding a. Thanks, Leonard. Can I add this? I want to add a point. This is all stuff that I haven't played with, so I would love to add a point and just soften it, but. Um, a few options there at the bottom too. Is there? Sorry. No, it's all good. Uh, so there we go. That's a bit softer. Let's try that. Let's yeah. see how that looks. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, kind of eased in at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's try another one. Manual. Let's see if we can do that. Let's nice. See if that works. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. There you go. Awesome. Hey, the chat once again chat saved us. Sa saving the day. <laughs> <laughs> Who's teaching who here? I know, <laughs> isn't that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And one That's other awesome. quick thing I like to do is add. Um, you can do a lot of stuff with camera volumes and everything, and all that's for another day. But one thing I would like to quickly touch on is noise. So, mm -hmm. because the chest is kind of like rumbling in this part, I thought maybe we could add some camera noise to kind of react to that. You yeah. Know? So on this middle camera, I thought, hey, let's go here, add this basic multi-channel curling. And it says, hey, it's, you need a profile. So there's some yeah. preset profiles here. And, and curling do... is just a type of noise, but oh, ten years, is everyone watching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't actually know where that term comes from or what it means, but <laughs> perhaps you do. I don't. <laughs> I just know that it's a type of noise. <laughs> uh, chat, okay, let us then, know. Yeah, chat, save us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so you can see now, like the the action is paused. Uh, oh, that was, that was so dramatic. That was, <laughs> and you can kind of feel that little bit of rumble okay. on the camera. Yeah. If you can't see it on stream, I'll just crank it to be like ten, and then you'll oh, really man. see it. Uh, <laughs> so you can go wild with it if you want. <laughs> Got all up in the chest's face, you know, <laughs> all up yeah. in its personal space. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Uh, and someone in chat says, um, Nathan Dreddragon says, uh, since the chest is rumbling, wouldn't it be cool to add spark effects? And yes, it would be cool to add spark mm. effects. I don't oh, know and, if I have any prepared, but. And and so. Gregory L underscore Unity said, probably from Rexa Unity, says, named after its creator, Ken Perlin. Amazing. Ken Perlin, my hero. I love that guy. <laughs> and then, Thank you. And then Tomate, Tomat, Toma 380 TE says uh perlin sounds like a merge of berlin and paris okay thanks huh? <laughs> just, yes, two was, great cities <laughs> two <Yeah. great> cities. <laughs> awesome all right cool uh yeah. so now we have this uh second way of animating your camera here yeah. and that's a really fast way to kind of block cameras out and uh make you know iterations on your ideas nice um yeah and the last one is so let's just quickly do this here um, we have to create a cinema machine dolly camera with track. And I'm just going to put those guys once again in our scene down here. And this is something I don't do often. So if I mess up, chat save us, but let's just mm -hmm. see here. I'm just gonna rotate this thing around and get this dolly kind of roughly in the right area. And so that it starts hit. with the one track, like a straight track. Yeah. We're going to play with it. Yeah. And cool. we can add more points to it here. So let's add like another one or two. And it's essentially its own little spline. Yeah. yeah it's its yeah. own little spline, which is uh, awesome. People love splines. Yeah. I love splines. <laughs> yeah. And 
I'm just going to translate. This is probably going to be a really weird little track, but you know what? Let's just roll with it. Let's see what we can do here. Mm -hmm. This is really handy if you're like, you know, just tracking a character while they're walking and talking or an airplane flying through the sky. Whatever you need it to do. Yeah. And great. So then we're going to take this camera and you can add it as a virtual camera here. Nice. Just love and the and you'll see nothing is happening. So mm -hmm. I'm going to add an animation track. And keyframe, it's values on the, there should be a, is it on this one? I think it's on the dolly from zero to one. Is it on the dolly? I believe it's a, it's a, hmm. No, I did this just, what? Oh. track dolly. Okay, yeah, it's on the camera. And then oh, you can just click uh, path position, add key, and you can key it, oops. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a very sensitive path position. Let's say, like, let's put it here. And you're going to notice, hey, wait, it's not looking at anything. So what we have to do is in the camera itself, give it a look at. Mm. And the chest will be the look at. So I'm just going to drag that into here. And now, no matter where this dolly is going. What if we did the look at as the crown? Sure, let's do What's that. What's going to happen, though? Like Maybe a well, the up. crown has an activation track, so I wonder oh, if so it will. Ball. Yeah, mm -hmm. perhaps you can blend between them, or you can even make a game object the look at and animate that game object around if you want. You Makes know? sense, right? And then you have yeah. control over it. Yeah. That's cool. And one thing I don't like is like the chest jumps and the camera exactly follows, so you can dampen it. I think. Oh yeah. Sorry, this is my. Uh, I don't do this very often, but that that might help with that. Yeah, so it feels like the camera's delayed a little bit, like there's yes. an actual person behind it. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's one thing that I feel like uh, just gives your game more of a human touch and mm -hmm. less of a gamey approach. And but, yeah, I think and there are more controls. Much. I think you can like change the the aim and then have it only move if the object is leaving a certain bound. Right. That way, it won't even react unless the object completely leaves a certain like frame that you've you've, you've put in right place. right yeah, yeah that is the composer stuff i think all this yes. and again i don't know much about it but you can change like the offset on these things and the dampening yeah. i think it's the dead zone mm -hmm. uh like you can define like the area where the interest is is kind of within and stuff but yeah and i think again. we needed to add the dampening to the aim actually so let's try that uh, oh okay the, sure to the maybe to the Horizontal. Uh, horizontal dampening vertical dampening. let's try that oh now, yeah i don't have the any... but, uh, but the horizontal makes damp. it the horizontal <laughs> we should maybe just vertical yeah okay sure yeah that kind of helped th a bit yeah. okay yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i think yeah. it's because i said it yeah uh, that's cool i'll have to do more uh investigation on cinema yes, machine yes, uh yes, composer yes. but yeah that's pretty cool. fun. As an animator, I like to just animate a camera, but this this is awesome that we have this type of um, control here for people that don't like setting keys. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, and I guess the next thing would just be recorder. Is that correct? Is oh, that yeah. Something? Yeah. So, like, we have the whole animation, uh, but Unity also has the recorder feature if you, if you mm -hmm. just want to intro it to everyone, Nathan. Sure. Like what, yeah. Uh, and Nathan Red Dragon says the light seems really obvious in the back. Why not have it be in the lid? Hey, all right, let's in do the it. chest. You know what? I think we'll do the recorder, and then at the end, we'll take a sure. bunch of suggestions and just like uh, polish up the animation and have fun with it and do like yeah, that yeah. whole section. So we'll we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So you want to go to fun. window uh, general yeah. recorder, and I like this recorder window, mm -hmm. and that's of course on the wrong screen. Um, and there's a few things quickly running through here. The first thing you gotta do is go add recorder yes. and you can have a animation clip, movie, whatever, image sequence. Let's just do movie for today. Uh, you can have your game view, which is our game camera that we're rendering. Um, and the output resolution, you can just do uh, 4K, full HD is what we're gonna do with normal 1080p. Um, and there's a couple of fun things here that are more like offline rendery, which is like the accumulation mm -hmm. 
And what accumulation is, is like, it's like subframe motion blur. Um, Cause you know, in video games, motion blur is calculated live, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not, it's not the most accurate way to render motion blur. So what they have to do is render the subframes between frames mm. of what the actual motion is doing to calculate correct motion blur. So it takes a little bit longer. So you could run that if you want. You also would like to change your frame rate. We are working at 60, so you can render it out at 60 if you want. What's the, so what's the benefit of adding motion blur? Uh, motion blur just makes things look like they're more cinematic, like they're more like the, an actual camera has filmed this object. It's oh, more yeah. like you'd expect to see it in a movie uh, and you'd expect to see it in more high-end kind of cinematics. And okay, stuff. cool. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, it also just makes things look cooler and, you know, looks good. Right. Uh, and you can choose your codec. H.264 is pretty common. I'm not a master of that stuff. Uh, you can give it a name and it goes to the recordings folder in our project. Uh, so once you hit start recording, I could do that, I suppose. Uh, it goes into play mode. So let's take a second. And I'll drink some water. <laughs> I'm assuming it's recording and playing. It is. But... You can see it moving along the bottom there. Okay. I wonder why my timeline's going so slow. No, it's when you hold click, it seems to stop when you're uh, moving the tab. Yeah. My bad. No, no, it's okay. Okay. So oh, now so... this camera is not the best camera to render a final image out of, but uh, that at least illustrates the point of the yeah. recorder. It's really cool to see it happening in like slow motion like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and when you're ready to watch it, you just click on this uh, up here. And I'm assuming this is it. Wow, beautiful. There you go. Best animation ever. ever. Yeah. And that, I think, is everything that we have uh, planned for discussion. But we can take suggestions, take questions. Um, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I think it would be fun to like keep taking suggestions, make a final version, record it, and then share it on Twitter. Medium. So you just, this is a really rough version of what we had. Ta-da. And then if there you go to play mode, you'll see all the beautiful effects and all that Let's fun go. stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm having so much fun. This is the best. I Absolutely. love this. And, and for everybody who's uh, like watching us from the beginning make sure to check out uh, lana's channel follow lana lana streams almost daily unity like eight hours of unity development a day oh, it's wow. amazing uh, she, uh developing a game named uh strain so go check that out cool yeah can't wait to see that that's gonna be awesome Absolutely. uh yeah so if anyone has any thoughts uh maybe i'll just keep on like i know there was nathan had one uh message one thought about having a, maybe a light come from inside and let's do it. Oh, yeah, I love that. So, you know, we, we could do the whole uh, typical uh, cinema thing where it's like in the orange and blue. Orange <laughs> so and blue? Could do like a light yeah. blue light, maybe. Yeah, sure, come out sure. Fainter or something. Um, <clears throat> a bit fainter. Let's do it. I love it in uh, I love those effects where you can kind of see the light right before the chest like erupts. Oh, and we, yeah. And we, we do have the chest kind of. Remember when we had it bounce? We do have it kind of open. There you go. Yeah, something like <laughs> That's that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. We can shoot it towards the camera to get more mm -hmm. bursting out. That's fun. And then we can animate that cam that light because you don't want it on the whole time. It'll look a bit strange. But let's yeah, try sure. that. All right. So in our lights little section here, I'll add this. Uh, I'll, I'll rename this light to be like interior blue. Because uh, things can get really confusing if you don't name your Absolutely. stuff. So let's go here. Turn this little recording on and use my arrow keys just to kind of frame through. So, oh, you know what? Let's maybe parent it to the right. chest. Because the chest bounces, but the, the light chest. is not bouncing with it, right? That's right. Just so jumping let's, over the light. Let's right pop now. it in there. So now it's a child and it's going to like, it's going to like follow the chest as it's popping around. Yeah. Um, a bit of light leaking happening, but that's there's okay. a bit of light leaking there. I think it's probably just shadow resolution or mm -hmm. maybe it's just the maybe just angle. a bit a bit low. If we move it up just a bit. Sure. There we go. There you go. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Awesome. This is what we do. Teamwork. Teamwork everybody. 
<laughs> it's the dream work. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you remember man. before where you could barely see the chest kind of like open up? This light really exaggerates yeah. that little detail. Yeah. Now I'm glad we made that detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to see more of these streams, everyone, uh, make sure to follow us uh, right here on this channel. We stream every Wednesday. Sometimes we'll do Tuesday or Thursday streams and uh, we'll, we do creator spotlight interviews where we interview creators. We do Let's Dev streams like this one and Let's Play streams where we play community games. So yeah. thanks for joining us. I'm just going to dial this intensity down a little bit now. So like it doesn't overpower everything else and dial this down a little bit and then ta -da! Beautiful. I think I think if we're gonna make this light really successful, you kind of have to milk it a bit more to be like rumbling for mm, longer. Okay. But um, you know, we could do that. So I just feel like it kind of pops, and yeah. you just can't see it strobing, which is yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. I can definitely do that. So yeah, so like when, you, what is your first like? You want to go back into the thing? Do you? What's the first step? You just like open up the, uh, the, I guess this is where the folder organization within the time, the groups within the timeline come in yeah, handy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I would probably play with this chest cover once mm -hmm. and click on that. And then, uh, or maybe, let me see here. Let me think. Boom. Maybe we just let it sit here for a bit before it opens, before it cracks open. And, oops. Nice. Okay. So and you're... then, so I'm just dragging that over. Uh, okay, and no. if this is kind of a fun feature too, if you select your keys, you can just like scale them. Oh, well, nice. Speed be faster the whole thing or up. slower. Nice. Yeah. Or that's like cool. more open or less open. You know, like that's oh, the wow. value. Okay. Which is fun. Uh, so I'm just going to now play with this cover, opening and closing. Oops. And I have to make sure I'm on pivot and local. Yeah. Uh, so now it's just going to be like, and we Bursting were at the seams. Yes. Sorry. Yes. And I was going to say, we were lucky enough for everyone who's just joining us now that this chest was built with the pivot at the hinge. And so we are just rotating from the hinge right now. That's right. So this is just really simple animation in Unity. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing characters and stuff, you might still want to use something like Maya, but mm -hmm. for our purposes today and for many purposes of game dev, uh, animating an engine is more than enough. Okay. All there right. we go. Beautiful. And now our light, I think, probably needs to be retimed a little bit, just because it starts to fade off a bit. So if, let's say I wanted to retime, yes, like the rumble of the chest, but also the uh, bounce at the same time and see them in relation to each other as I'm animating one. Mm -hmm. well, what would mm -hmm. would I just expand the timeline? Oh, like expand them both but then animate one can you see the keyframes of both at the same time or how does you that you can work? see the keyframes of both but it's you can animate quickly in this timeline here and like retime things if you mm -hmm. want it's just a smaller more compact version of the animation editor i yeah. like to make it big so i can see what i'm doing in detail but if you're doing something simple it's easy enough just to scroll wheel in here yeah i can see my chest there bounce here and my uh the lid of my uh, chest and that's really there. useful especially if you want to kind of like adjust one in relation to the other exactly yeah. exactly so now i feel like this box is a bit too chattery this lid but <laughs> um you know that's why we have this awesome scale feature the scale oh, and cool. yeah, something like that's that a nice tip yeah so there you go i think that is uh that is that um so yes yeah. tale of a wolf this is timeline yeah and it is increasingly powerful, totally. <laughs> yeah, I love timeline. It is my favorite favorite thing. So much fun. Maybe the crown rotates and glitters are falling down from the crown. Well, we can add more oh, rotation yeah. um, for sure. Let's do that. Should we make the light strength a bit stronger? So it's like, or did oh, yeah. you already adjust the light? Uh, I forgot to adjust the light. Thank you. No worries. So I think what I did is I adjusted the intensity. And so keep hitting going. us with your suggestions, chat. We want to see them. Right now we're just we're in the fun part where we just make it uh, look good. We're just noodling, just yeah. noodling around. Maybe I will make this even more delayed. It's probably too bright, but I 
All right, that looks cool. A disco ball. Someone wants it to be a disco ball. <laughs> <laughs> so let's adjust this crown rotation. So it comes out. Maybe it needs to be like more at an angle. At an so angle. Well, what if we wanted to replace, like let's say we changed our mind or we want to make multiple of these assets in our game, but we don't want to redo the whole animation. We just want to replace the mesh, you know, to save yeah, time. How would sure. we do that? That's pretty simple. You can um, find the object that you want in your scene. So let's take, uh, instead of magic circles, we want hyper casual chests. We got some prefabs. Let's say we want a hammer. Let's, do a let's bring that in. Yeah. I like to just copy, like click on this crown and go right up here and go mm -hmm. copy world transforms and then click on our hammer and go uh, paste world transforms. And now our hammer is in the same kind of spot okay. as our um, uh, crown was. And I'm just mm -hmm. going to get it to be more aesthetically okay, pleasing oh that looks so great with the lighting at the bottom <laughs> <laughs> and then let's just take this hammer and drop it in so we have this loot thing right so yeah. right now it's referencing the crown uh -huh. i'm just going to replace it with hammer and you get all the same keyframes and everything same keyframes wow. and everything and same so that we lost the rotation that we, we lost the rotation so i'm going okay. to hide this crown for now uh, and then go into the um, so now we have a, a hammer appearing instead of the crown. That's awesome. That was fast. Um, yeah, pretty fast and easy. I'm just going to adjust my camera so that I can see. We all know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just watched the new Thor. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I hadn't seen it yet. Oh, it's got it's got uh, Natalie Portman as Thor now. Mm -hmm. So spoiler, it's in the trailer, but spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> it's two Thors now. It's two Thors. Uh, all right, yeah, and so, so if you want to adjust the angle of this, let's look at the F curves. Okay. So uh, let's go into the rotation. Uh, and let's see here, what would it be? Z? Yeah, Z, because I'm Canadian, sorry. I used to get a lot of flack for that. <laughs> and you know what, since there's, oh, what do I have selected? Hammer, yeah, I thought. <laughs> okay, so I'll just save a keyframe here and just to be faster, Okay. Save some keys and see what it's doing in here. So now, because there was no Z rotation, I'm just going to delete that and see what it's doing with the Y. Uh, Juice, Juice the Hub 25 says maybe the light could be different colors for different loot rarity. Absolutely. Ooh, yeah, you could yeah, totally I do love that. that. Yeah. Yeah, it's really easy to, you know, change the color, animate the color uh, on yeah. the light. You can just, yeah. Oops save uh, you can select the light and save a key on mm. the filter here just by oops sorry yeah so even like as it's opening it could be like a neutral white anticipating what color it's gonna become when it pops out so you know Let's like oh it. it turns out it's a oh yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't even suggesting it but uh, you got excited so let's do let's it let's do it let's do it <laughs> all right so let's do a key here and then it's uh the spotlight here so I, I'm happy with the orange color that's there. So let's yeah. just add key on there. I guess you can't key the temperature, but you can key the color. And then let's make it instead of white, like, I don't know, bluish. So you can see it's blue. Maybe it's just not showing up enough because it's, um, uh, we'll just delay the color. So you can kind of see that it starts off blue and then ends yellow, but it's a really fast transition. So I'm just trying to massage that a little bit. Nice. So it's blue and then it fades to yellow. That's Beautiful. Great. Very fast, but it's there. Yeah. You can animate almost anything. Turns out it's a rusty hammer, says tail of a wolf in the chat. Yeah, that would <laughs> suck. <laughs> Or the brown light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and speaking of, you can actually add sound effects to the, to right. the uh, like there are sound effects tracks, right? If you had some. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. I don't have anything prepared, but you can just yeah. click on add audio track, and then you can right click and add from audio clip. So exactly. anything like a, 
a wave or mp3 or whatever uh will work yeah so uh, and you can assign a source to it say you want it to be localized to somewhere in your scene you can assign that source but mm -hmm. if you put none uh it's just kind of like omnipresent it's just kind of wherever you are it'll play. Do, you, do you have some kind of like audacity or some audio recorder on your computer i don't think so oh, okay i was gonna say we should totally just record something with our voices right now and be like oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just drop it in there. Hey, if you got it, if you got, if you want to record something now, by all means. I'll but put I just it realized in. we're not sharing our audio anyway, so oh, we, okay. we wouldn't show up. But you can do that for you know. Yeah, exactly. That's what I do in all my game jams. You just, always add your own sound effects. I've done it. I've done it a few times. That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. I love that. There's no time. There's no time. Yeah. Oh man, because yeah, yeah. I mean, you know exactly what you want, so it's way yeah. faster than searching through audio libraries. And exactly. Stuff, so exactly. That's awesome. Cool. Well, that's great. Yeah. So yeah. So I, have, I do have a question. So uh, let's say the hammer comes out. All right. Yeah. yeah. And and um, I guess it, it's not necessarily for the hammer, but for any kind of animation, you have the chest rumbling. Let's say, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's say you wanted everything to be transformed a bit, like rotated to the left a bit. How do you affect? How do you add that overall rotation to everything without affecting the micro rotations? If you know what I, if you know what I mean. Um, I think you can, if I understand correctly, so you're saying that the whole chest is rumbling and you yes. want the whole chest to move, not, is that uh, what you let's mean? Say, let's say you want the whole chest to be like sideways, for, for okay. example. Okay. How, you how could, would you, would you just rotate the main object on top? Yeah, or, or, or you could like reparent it. So we put a chest uh, parent object. Oh, so and then you, you can add to, another rotation on top of that. Okay. Yeah, that so now sense. we changed the parent object and now all the, the animation is kind of offset. Yes. Right. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, that's Flat why when, layers. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. When you make uh, parent objects or any type of um, game object like this, that's kind of organizational. I always make sure that I zero stuff out because when you have an offset on top of it, in terms of like its world space, yes. things get messy real fast. Uh, and that's something I can quickly do here too. Is just like start making uh, like game objects for organizi or organizing your scene. So mm -hmm. like this lights, for example, I'll just zero this out and then put my spotlights and stuff under this. Um, and even like cameras. So what, what's awesome about this is like, if you have your scene, for example, all in a group, you can easily just turn it off. Wait, that's not it, prefabs. You can easily just turn it off so that like, if you don't need to see everything in your environment, just you have it organized in a way it's easy to toggle it on and off. So it keeps your performance light and you're able to iterate quickly and all right. that kind of stuff. Um, super handy. And if you're working with teams, it's really, it's kind of necessary. So yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Is there anything, any, anything else chat? I think, I think we're good here. I think we have a pretty awesome. What, what if we hit play? How does it look now? Okay, sure. The overall thing. Let's check it out. Let us know if you have any questions, chat. Yeah. Whoa, beautiful. Oh, Our cameras awesome. are uh, a bit lackluster right now, but I think yeah. overall, pretty happy with how it turned out. We did have that cool like zooming in kind of camera and then the zoom out one. That was really yeah. awesome as well. I can put that back in there real yeah. quick. Okay, cool. So let's just do it real quick. Like, yeah, let's do that. 10 seconds. Speed run. Yeah. Speed run cameras. Okay. While doing that, I'm curious. I, I do have a question. Sure. Um, let's say you're building a little short film yeah. in, in Unity. Would you build the entire short film on one timeline or can you or do you usually use multiple timelines? Um, so there's this tool, like this is just one timeline, but there's a tool called sequences in, mm -hmm. in Unity, which is essentially like timeline, but like the next level up. And so it allows oh. you to have every single shot be on its own nested timeline. Okay. Um, so that you can re-edit and, and organize your shots in whatever order you want, like you would with Premiere or any other editing software. And do you create a specific scene for each timeline, like a separate scene for each timeline, or do you do it all in one scene and just... Yeah, this is something we should probably talk about in the future. It's a huge topic, but it's yeah. like um, I like to create the, what I what I why I kind of work in Unity now is because I'm addicted to this workflow of this like scene management where I can like have my entire short film all in one scene file, okay. and I can have my edit in that scene file using the sequences tool. 
uh, and and I'm able to have the ed the power of like editing in Adobe Premiere, but it's all happening right here in Editor. Yeah. Um, it's super powerful, and um, it allows me to make faster creative choices. Right. You know, and that's the whole thing with with um, this type of work is you gotta go fast. And if you're able to make these big creative changes, like the camera animation and the lighting and and the editorial structure of your scene all at the same place like that is a huge time savings and it's super fun so, yeah. so yeah. scenes and sequencers that could be one of the episodes yeah that we do. let's right. do it yeah. upcoming animation series yeah <laughs> all right all right awesome so our <laughs> transition is a little bit out. slow but yeah. yeah and let's just see but that's the general idea yeah so good all right <laughs> nice. it's so cool. good awesome <laughs> fantastic yeah, uh uh i guess uh one more question sure. about the frame rates yeah. so in the beginning you chose a frame rate for games and so mm -hmm. um can you make those do you have to make those decisions in the, in the beginning or can you change your mind halfway through mm -hmm. how does that work that's a good question i'm not too sure how it converts down but mm -hmm. uh you can change it at any time so now it's at 24 so it's the same amount of time uh, it's, it's not, not like it's stretching the out the it's not yeah. stretching out the the length of anything it's okay. just changing how it's being rendered on the camera so, okay so it's just changing yeah. the rendering through. yeah so it's, it's only speaking to the camera uh and i guess whatever game time frames. Okay. yeah animation frames. Yeah. Yeah. okay yeah. cool got it yeah yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Nathan. This was fantastic. This is like, uh, and thank you to the chat for all your questions, all your suggestions. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, if you if you missed any of this, I see people in the chat saying I missed this or I I, I, I overslept or something like that. <laughs> um, the VOD will be recorded and you'll be able to access it right after the stream. Uh, Nathan, this was fantastic. I hope you'll join us again for another episode. Oh. I am so series. grateful to be a part of this. Uh, the oh, community is so so generous for for uh, interacting with us and uh, taking the time out to chat this morning. Uh, and thank you for including me, Hassan. This has been oh, so fun. Yeah, no, it was a pleasure. So where can people find you and find your your work? Yeah, I guess easiest is Twitter. It's uh, ISO SMRT, which is an old Simpsons joke uh, from a million years ago. Um, <laughs> I should probably change my Twitter name, uh, but <laughs> uh, you can also find out my my animation I make with my friends called Little Mountain Animation. We're on okay. Instagram and and our website's littleanimation.com. Awesome, great. Yeah. Make sure to follow Nathan. Follow us here on Twitch to see more of these streams. We're going to definitely have Nathan back on for more in this animation series. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you around. Bye.